In August, the FDA announced that it would now be releasing daily adverse event data from the FDA Adverse Event Reporting System, or FAERS, replacing its previous schedule of quarterly releases as part of efforts to modernize safety monitoring and facilitate rapid identification of safety signals. But questions remain about the public health value and the potential consequences of this shift. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Reshma Ramachandran, an Assistant Professor of Medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. Dr. Ramachandran has co-authored a perspective article about the FDA's safety surveillance and related communications. Dr. Ramachandran, to start, could you explain how FAERS works? What information does the system include, and what's the source of that data? FAERS is the main database by which the FDA collects information on adverse events and other serious medication errors, as well as complaints about product quality. It's considered to be a passive post-marketing safety surveillance system, such that you have patients and health professionals that voluntarily submit reports about adverse events or quality issues related to drugs and biologics, and manufacturers are required to submit reports to FAERS if they should encounter any sort of product quality or safety issues related to them. How has the FDA traditionally used that system to identify and to address safety issues? So FAERS is a safety signal collection system. What that means is that these reports are aggregated together into a centralized database, and then FDA, specifically within the Office of Surveillance and Epidemiology, actually monitors this FAERS data as it comes in. And this becomes the starting point for FDA to conduct investigations of these safety signals to be able to see whether or not these safety signals reflect a true problem a true product quality issue or an adverse event issue related to a drug or biologic in question. So FDA uses these safety signals to then launch investigations to be able to identify whether or not these safety signals reflect true issues with the medications. If there is an issue, once they conduct the investigation, they will take a few actions. Either they'll take a regulatory safety action, and that might include changes to a drug label, it might include a black box warning, a safety communication to health professionals or patients, or even withdrawing the medication. And then there are times where the investigations might yield basically no results around the safety signal actually resulting from the drug or biologic. And so those are resolved and the safety signal is then considered to be closed under investigation. So as you say, FAERS is a passive system. What about the FDA's active surveillance system? What does that involve and how does the agency use it to address these safety concerns? So FDA has a separate active surveillance system called Sentinel, or the Sentinel Initiative. And as a part of that, FDA uses the Sentinel Initiative to look at different sort of data sources, including primarily insurance claims data and sometimes electronic health record data to be able to do investigations around safety signals that have been flagged either through FAERS or other issues that have come up as a part of their routine sort of surveillance around drugs and biologics. And that system is something where FDA can more proactively, using this sort of real-world data sources, be able to identify whether or not there's true safety issues that require a regulatory action, like I mentioned before, around label changes, a black box warning, a drug withdrawal, or even further post-marketing requirements or other studies that they want the manufacturer to do on a voluntary basis for FDA to be able to pursue. And so that active surveillance system essentially allows FDA to use very large data sources to be able to identify whether or not there's true issues related to a particular drug or biologic. So you say in your perspective article that the FAERS data are subject to important limitations. Obviously, one of them is the passive nature of the system, but are there others? Yes. In particular, it's hard to tell what the denominator is around medication use, around the use of a drug or biologic. So you might get a safety signal that's coming from a patient or health professional on a voluntary basis or a manufacturer, but not understanding what that means in the context for overall use and understanding how many patients in general might be affected by this makes it difficult to be able to interpret what a safety signal coming through the FAIR system means, which is why it's very important for FDA then to actually conduct an investigation to be able to see whether or not the safety signal actually is a true safety issue that FDA needs to act upon. FAIRS is also subject to reporting bias. So as I mentioned before, manufacturers are required to report adverse events to the FAIRS system, whereas health professionals and patients provide voluntary reports. 
And these are typically underrepresented. And you can imagine that if there is reporting in the lay media, for instance, around a particular drug or biologic, this might prompt further reports from health professionals and patients that might not necessarily be reflective of kind of the true nature or the true prevalence of a safety concern. On top of that, we also know that manufacturers have sometimes used the FAIR system to be able to influence the market, litigation, and essentially be able to use FAIRs to kind of game the system in such a way that it might preferentially favor their product if they're a competitor or create market disruptions for another product that might be available. And so because FAIRS is a passive surveillance system, it's really the first step for FDA then to take further action to investigate whether or not these signals are real. And then moving to the FDA's August announcement, exactly what changes is the agency making to FAIRS and why are they doing it? So the announcement from August, at least according to the FDA, is meant to enhance transparency by having more real-time reporting of the FAIRS data. Moving from quarterly to daily, however, doesn't address the limitations around FAIRS and being a passive safety surveillance system and in not providing necessarily accurate information of whether or not there's actually true safety concerns related to drugs or biologics that are FDA approved. In fact, this might actually create some confusion for patients, clinicians, and other stakeholders as well. FDA will still continue to receive safety signals reported to them through FAIRS on a real-time basis. And FDA's ability to be able to review these safety signals and make sure that sensitive information around patients are de-identified, making sure that there's accuracy around some of the safety signals that are reported to them, and also cleaning the data to ensure that there's not duplication or kind of incongruencies with how the data is being reported to them might be compromised with FDA having to rush to release these reports on a daily basis and create confusion for patients, clinicians, and also for other stakeholders. So it's unclear, at least to us, what FDA is solving or what problem FDA is able to solve with more real-time reporting, and in fact, could actually have consequences that might be harmful for patients and clinicians in terms of understanding what these safety signals actually mean in terms of drugs or biologics they might be taking or prescribing. And then finally, what alternative changes could FDA make to its safety surveillance infrastructure that would allow it to more rapidly detect and evaluate potential safety concerns? What do you think some options are? There's many options, I think, for FDA to pursue to really address this issue around ensuring adequate and also improved safety surveillance. In particular, I think having FDA focus on the Sentinel system the active post-marketing safety surveillance infrastructure that is being used to be able to do real-time and more proactive surveillance around safety issues related to drugs and biologics would be very useful. There has been concerns, for instance, that the data infrastructure for Sentinel is not sufficient. It relies primarily on insurance claims data that have difficulty being linked to other sources of data, including electronic health records and also other clinical data such as imaging reports or laboratory results. And so improving that infrastructure, which FDA has proposed and talked about even in as recent as this year, would be a better use of FDA's efforts in terms of improving the safety surveillance infrastructure. On top of that, there are sort of other additional data sources that the FDA could leverage in terms of improving the Sentinel system. And that would help to enhance understanding of how severe adverse events are, particularly in groups of patients that are vulnerable, older adults in particular, and also those patients who might have other comorbidities are oftentimes not included in clinical trials in particular. So having a better understanding for us as clinicians, whether or not these drugs or biologics that have safety concerns might have additional concerns, especially for patients who are taking multiple drugs at the same time. The other thing I'll just mention, if FDA did want to improve the passive surveillance infrastructure affairs, there's a few recommendations that we would probably offer. And this is based on some prior work that we've done to actually look at how FDA addresses safety signals that are submitted to affairs. While we have seen that a majority of those safety signals that are submitted to affairs are resolved and then do lead to safety actions, there's oftentimes a lack of transparency and a lack of understanding for the public, and especially for patients and clinicians, what the motivations are for these regulatory actions. So for instance, there's been several times where for me as a clinician, 
I've seen announcements from the FDA, Dear Doctor letters, that talk about FDA taking action around a new drug or a biologic that has been recently approved because of a safety signal. But it's unclear what the level of evidence is around those changes, the data they use to be able to investigate and resolve those safety signals. And all of that could be put forward in the public. And that would be a better use of transparency for FDA to pursue rather than more real-time reporting of FARA's data, in which there's still a lot of confusion of what these safety signals actually mean for patients and clinicians in practice. Thank you, Dr. Ramachandran.